Nimbira. An instrument first made with bamboo and now made with metal keys. Made famous by Thomas Mapfumo in 1980s. It's an instrument made to attract spirits of the water with its rattling bottle caps. Now let's embark on this adventure going all the way to Zambia in West Africa where we can find the Zambia River, one of the biggest rivers in Africa where all this started. Today I will show you my process of doing an Embira without ever have done carpentry in my life with the help of Gabriel Quintaro, an Embira maker that went to Africa to learn the art of it. So now we're starting the process of doing the Embira I am going to make and Gabe tell me what the calculations are for this. So basically um, we have this piece of wood here, purple heartwood. Yep. So because the uh, instrument I made first time around is a little bit bigger um, I just scaled the dimensions and we're gonna make a cut here so that because this wood you know is a little bit uh, it's not as wide basically we're just adjusting the dimensions instead of nine inches we're doing we're gonna do uh, seven and a half because it's five inches across instead of six which is the larger original instrument and so right now we're just making a pencil marking so that we can make the cut and then put the designs on the instrument and start you know the chiseling process so, just resuming, the first step is grabbing a piece of wood and what they use in Africa normally is a wood called Mupva Maropa that is come from Angola trees. If you don't have one, you can use any type, just the sound is going to be different. Second step, make the markings. The one I'm going to do is going to be 7.5 inches by 5. Now let's get to the sawing. We're in the process of sawing, the measurements Gabe had. That was 7.5 by 5. Now it's my turn to saw. Man, I've never used this. It's amazing. It's magic saw. So, we have our little piece, we're gonna use some sandpaper, and we're gonna leave it smooth. What are you doing there, Gabe? <clears throat> so, basically, uh, before I started chiseling, I did some measurements with a pencil. And uh, right now, we're just fleshing out um, these markings that we've made so that we can put the rest of the materials on the soundboard, the wood, uh, like the keys, pressure bars, and these bottle caps right here, which produce an interesting rattling effect. I'm just checking, you know, all the edges to make sure that they go down. Well, the measurements of that is half an inch form the sides and from the top the book of Embira making says one and one quarter to the top but Gabe normally uses one and three quarters of an inch in a you know vertical line and that the depth the depth is normally half an inch of the wood is the same in pretty much all the areas because that's important I think just aesthetically and for how the wood resonates and stuff like that so anyway we're just we're getting towards the end of taking off all the wood we need to. There's a, a pencil line that marks how deep it should be, and then I'm just eyeing the rest of it as it goes down towards the top of the instrument, what will be the top of the instrument later. So one of the things I'm doing differently this time, the instructional book, or the, the book called Sol Vimbira says to make it, is have the um, this bar here the crossbar underneath it like only goes into the wood here it doesn't go all the way out so this time instead of digging in a line here what I'm gonna do is take a saw and just saw from one end of the instrument to the other it's gonna reduce the time it takes because normally I use a file and it takes a while to like dig out a, a necessary line that like can fit the piece of metal the crossbar underneath so that the keys can rest on top and I think that'll save a lot of time and it will look pretty cool. Next step, you have to use sandpaper and 
and smoothen all that you have chiseled. So, in resume, we finished kind of the first part of the Ambira making. First step was cutting the wood. We did uh, 7.5 inches by 5. Then it was the chiseling. We did measurements of half an inch from the sides. And then from the top, we took one and three quarters. And then we started chiseling all the wood. Chisel, chisel, chisel. Then Gabe is going to cut uh, a full line so the crossbar enters. Now we're going to the next step the making of the keys. So, Gabe, what are you doing over there? It's just a bunch of scrap metal that I've collected from, you know, recycling trash site, stuff like that. And all this metal can be used when cut down and pounded. They can be used to make keys. He is getting uh, the pieces for, how do you call these? The keys? He's now selecting scrap metal we had the other day. You grab those, you cut them, and then you hammer it, baby. So basically, you just first straighten up the piece with a few strikes all over the body. And later on now, you start to flatten the top of it. That is going to be where you're going to be putting your thumb. And that's our key, baby. So we're taking the key here, and we're just filing it so that wears off and it shines the key. And we're just also filing for any impurities as far as uh, like straightness along the edges or on the tops if there are any bumps. And then by the end we'll have a key that feels nice to play on the uh, finger in the sun. Now you repeat this process of the key various times until you have all the keys you want for your instrument. And then comes the next step. So we go back to Mbira that's all chiseled and sandpapered. With pencil markings you draw at equal distances four points where you're gonna put your eye box. You will draw where you did your pencil markings. After that you put washers, then the nuts, and you push it not that tight because inside those eye bolts it's where you're gonna put your rod. Now you get a little piece of metal bar and you put it over the wood and then with some pins you put the bottle caps so it has that rattling noise. So basically we have all these keys here. See? Oop, they're falling all over the place. So we have all these keys here which I've previously pounded out and filed and made. And Basically, we're going to take what's number first, we'll start with the longest key, if not try one of the second longest keys after that, and so we're going to raise the eye bolts on this new young here. So basically this is what makes the pressure go here, it makes the pressure on the keys. So now we have the final product after doing that process various times and putting a key and pressuring it and checking the tuning with another ambira or a piano if you don't have another instrument, you have our final product. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned how to do an ambira. <laughs> And our Japanese friends like the two, yeah! We love Embira, woo!